Shalom, shalom, shalom. The Lord is good and His mercy is endures forever. There are many times I have often in my quiet time expected questions from my sisters especially and even from the men who may be quiet listening to some of my videos. I expect questions because even the Lord Yeshua encouraged His own disciples to ask Him questions that have now benefited some of us to hear the question and the answer the Lord Yeshua gave. For instance, in Matthew chapter 24, in Luke 21, and in Mark 13, the disciples were asking, as the Lord was telling them about the signs of the end time, of them when they were still in Israel, and us who will be taken to the valley of Gentiles to serve and to be enslaved. The Lord Yeshua answered that it would be about the great deception. Be careful, no one deceives you. In as much as I'm grateful that questions are not thrown at me because most of the truth happening with my life, I don't always have the answers immediately. The way the Lord has dealt with me, some is two years, three years after I've known fully that which was happening to me. As the Lord allows me to be still before him, to be patient. One thing I've known about uh, me working more with the Holy Spirit is patience. I need to be patient. I need to just be patient. That is one significant fruit of the Holy Spirit that I realize has been at work in me. Be patient. Even when I don't understand having a kind of Jonah situation that, Lord, but you spoke to me. Why is he appearing as though you did not? One thing I find out is that even with me, unknowingly, at uh, the time is happening, even with me, what I expect to be spiritual has been personal with me. What I expect to be, you know, for general has been like for me as a singular. It's almost like me looking at the Gentiles and see them. When the Lord is talking to his people about spiritual truth, they don't know how to discern. They will just think the Lord is talking physical. But even in me being spiritual, the Lord has let me know that I could be talking to only you, Israel. And you think I'm talking to the whole people. So the Lord has let me know that even in spirituality, if the Lord is talking, the Lord has taken his bridle. Long story short, for instance, wherein I didn't understand, I didn't know. If the Lord did not even tell me, I won't know that he's taking me. As I tell you that I'm the body of Reuben and the body of Christiana from Christ being over Anna, that Anna of Mary lineage. Yes, my mother was Christiana. So let me go in answering some questions that people have not asked. Based on Jeremiah 33, 3, God has given to me since age 33, some 22, 23 years ago. So the Lord has been with me and is still with me. I'm going to be putting the question that Sister Janet, why are you asking your spouse to give you some money you've given him at a certain time back? Now, we know scriptures like the one on the screen now. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So many people quote this verse. They say the gift of God and his call can never be withdrawn. They are irrevocable. All this English. But do you understand that that's for those who are working with God? Not those who, you know, they are doing their own thing like Eli. God made it very clear to Eli that yes, you are from the priest lineage of the Levites and I expected you to bring up your sons as godly priests, not hooligans. So the Lord said in 1 Samuel 2.30, Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel declares, I did indeed say that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, for I will honor those who honor me, but those who despise me will be disdained. How about that? Also, another passage that is coming through my mind is Matthew 25, 14 to 30. The parable of the talents of gold. God gave someone like five bags of talent of gold, another person two, and the other one that was given one did not bother to invest it or do anything with it. Just had this ally also, case, okay, sera, sera behavior. The Lord took from him. 
that bag of gold and punished him and eventually gave that bag to the one who had much and had done well with the much he had. So when you are quoting scriptures, don't do as if God has hemmed himself. He cannot go back on his word. So if you can go back on God's word, God's word will go back on you. What you do determines what God does to you. If you draw near to God, he draws near to you. If you hate God, God hates you. So you are the one, you know, sowing the relationship you will eventually have with God. Many of you are just deceiving yourself. Many of you, if you are of Revelation 3, 15 to 21, if you are of Matthew 7, 12 to 23, because the Lord says, many will come, he will say, I don't know you. And that will be the fact because you are just deceiving yourself. To round this up, and the answer to the question, the reason why I asked and I want it known even online to the Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 class of witnesses of God, the Holy Spirit knows, and even my people online knows. I have openly asked for any money that has to do with fake unity. The Lord has delivered me from being a sapphira. I thought for the Lord to tell me whom to marry. That means this is God's choice. I just submit to him. He must know what he's doing for God to give this man to me. I didn't know that God gave this man to me so that by the time he deals with me, I will know how to look up and not around. Long story short. So I was ready to be an Acts chapter 5, 1 to 10, Safira. But God was training me that I will go the Safira way. There are many marriages the Lord is letting me know that many of these entire marriages the likes of T.D. Jakes now, and the one that calls herself his wife, said it are just hypocrites living complete demonic lifestyle underground and telling you to buy their books from the pit of hell. Women, you are loose along throughout all those books from this house. All those books of all those Illuminati have long gone from this house, burning them, tearing them. Most of those books I didn't even read. You know, you just buy as of a new when they come and preach, and the one that don't even come to preach, you see online, you just buy. Thinking one day you will read. Thank God I never got to read those filthy books. So now they are coming out to say they are gay. Gay. Not after putting their hand on the floor to say they're working for God. Will anyone look back and be gay and say they are going to be forgiven? You should go and study the word of God if you really want God to know you. Go and study the literal, physical word of God. And not those people that are eligible for forgiveness and those eligible for repenting. Don't just think that everybody in the world today can just rush to heaven. There are some that have been given over to Lucifer. The words of 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. to Whom the Lord says, Having a form of godliness these people have, but they deny God's power to make them holy. They are the type that will tell you nobody can be holy. Going against God's word? Because they are trying to be holy in their own power. They don't have the Holy Spirit to make them holy. So they say nobody can be holy. Of course, nobody can be holy. But the Holy Spirit can make you holy. So God says, stay away from such people. As much as it lies in your power, live at peace. Because some of them... Our family members all around us. So in another way, just make sure that you are preaching the truth to them. And you don't allow them to corrupt your own holiness. Because without holiness, you will not see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. So the reason why I ask and I made it clear, because I might talk about it, is that it wasn't even in my mind until I began to, you know, watch some of our people of Isaiah 58, 1-2, whom the Lord sent me to. Long story short, correcting some not to swear and not to take oath. And then it came to my mind that, come to think of it, after getting to, you know, friendship with my own spouse before we eventually married, there was this thought that came, I don't know from who, within both of us, whether it was taught, I don't think it was um, applied, about doing this, pricking of hands. You know, you just 
copy and paste most of the time following others. We need to repent of this Exodus 23 verse 2, you know, copy and paste. So people just do it as though to solidify their, you know, friendship or as in the case of the money I'm asking back, as though another unity bigger than covenant to solidify one's marriage in the Lord. So when I was here, you know, working, and my spouse was still back in Nigeria, you know, these poems come and just stop. He became a poetic and writer, trying to woo me kind of, you know, and it had to do with me being faithful in sending the money I was earning. Maybe it was concerned that I might be in my generosity, giving it to my siblings who were also there for me here and there. I don't understand. He was just becoming so sweet talk. Some of you remember that even in the planning of my daughter's wedding, one or two sisters may understand that I kept saying, hey, my husband is changing and becoming a bit nice. So, And I'm asking him, this year, uh, all this niceness, is it because of the preparation for the wedding or will it last? Because I've noticed such pattern at certain times of happenings or events. And then everybody goes to be on their own as malice continues from the head of the woman. I don't deal with malice. That's not part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I believe it's the Holy Spirit putting it in my thought that asks him, concerning that agreement because the Lord even helped me. One of the ways the Lord helped me because my siblings here will see how I struggle coping with the cold. Back then, I wasn't wearing trousers. I struggled before I even wore trousers initially with all their convincing message of uh, women's trousers is different from man's trousers. Because some still believe they are obeying the Deuteronomy 32.5 that says, do not be in that we pertains to man as women of God, professing holiness. So some believe that, okay, here they have women trouser. Maybe in Nigeria they don't have women trouser. Well, here they have, they say because of cold. So let's stick to the women. As long as we don't wear men's trouser, we are not disobeying God. So God knows those who have that kind of mindset and those who are outright rebellious, thinking it's not about trouser. You will know what it's about when the Lord judges you. So anyway... I struggled in the cold. So I know how I worked and worked almost without any break in a week to get the first 1,000 pounds. And then I was working as an auxiliary nurse, even though I was a trained nurse back at home. But when you come here, you don't just get transitioned immediately. You have to apply to their hospitals or nursing home to do their conversion course, which will take another you know, a few months, six months or so. And sometimes you have to pay the nursing home, all these things. So when I was just coming the first time for more of a holiday to see whether this is a place where I want to come, even though I was best here, the same way I want to go back now to Abuja, Nigeria, to see whether I really want to go back finally to set to. You know, sometimes you have to apply the Bible principle of What's of who call spying a land or spying a place to know whether you're going to fight much or not before you occupy what God has given to you. So this was what I was doing. As I was trying my best not to wear that trouser, I was more exposed to cold. That my siblings will know that with all this your work on stop, claiming that I cannot leave my children and I will not work to go and give them something. You now imagine the first 1,000 pounds I just sent it to my husband. I didn't allow any of my siblings to know. And the money kept, you know, reducing, of course, because <laughs> to work for another 1,000 is a long time. So maybe 500, 250. What stopped me was me one time, knowing one of his doctor friends was going to Nigeria. I asked his friend to give some money to my spouse on my behalf as I send him a check on telling him to expect the money from his friend. He went cold on me. Sincerely, for a long time, I didn't get it. It was later on, when I was quiet, much later, months, if not even years, that it dawned on me that he did not want his friend knowing that he's asking me for money. Even in my personal life, sometimes it's months later I get it. It just dawns on me as the Holy Spirit releases intuition within me that, oh, so this is why. 
I just couldn't get him to tell me why is he not happy I'm sending the money through his friend. What's the problem? He didn't want them to know. This is a man that coerced me into unity. The very unity he stopped me from giving money to his family members. I didn't need to tell him before I send money to his people. All my own siblings are here. I don't have a parent on earth again. My parents are in heaven, so the next parent I have was his mom. And I sent money to her. She was just praying and praying until she asked me not to be sending money to her. All works for my own good. So, just to summarize, the Holy Spirit wanted to now bring up the whole issue about unity that we never really worked in. Because that was more of uniformity it was luring me into. He just comes close to me, be my friend, when he has something to gain from me or around me, only to turn later to be the man he has always been. So these people, when the Lord describes them as having a form of godliness, if they practice their form of godliness, you think they are changed. But wait for a little time, then the real self is almost the proverb of the scripture. Can a leopard change his colors, his whatever appearance? So the point is that the unity was based on an Acts chapter 5, 1 to 10 type of fake uniformity, which is why having been prompted to see that this is a kind of oath, a kind of agreement that is not scriptural, is based on deception. It's not us working together. If I cannot give your own mother money, must I announce to you when I was working? He sees it as if I'm making him look bad as if he's not giving as much as his wife which I don't see that way but you know no matter how you do things sometimes some you will never please the world if you don't give they'll say ah, because it's not a real mother if you give it's like they want to shine me I don't know what kind of man will think his wife giving to his mother is outshining him so that was it. So the mother practically said I should wait for him to do the giving. So it has worked for my own good. When it was put on my mind to go and ask for this money, I've never given anybody money and I go back to ask them why. And I know the nature of God is that, as we've heard, generally the callings of God, the giftings of God upon his true children who remain true to him are without repentance. Uh, irrevocable, uh, unchangeable. So one wants to be like one's heavenly father, of course, to give somebody and pray to give even much more later. But this was a giving that is based on like an oath, soft to oath. Now he stopped me from blessing his own family. But before you know it, true what's up that I'm not on what's up. He doesn't even give me information that is passed from my family of any event. He just appears there without telling me. As though those ones may think he has told me, decided not to come. That's how he went missing for two, three days. Only to know that he went for my own sister's event that I didn't know about and he didn't tell me. And those ones, you know, there are some outsiders that don't get it. Even close family, extended members. They don't get the operations. They just assume that, ah, the wife didn't come. So she heard she didn't come. Why don't you ask her? This is the issue many of us who have been so much in the church, church that we can't ask um, anybody question. You can't question. Even Apostle Paul, his own teaching was being, you know, checked by Acts chapter 17, 11, Berean Christian, to see whether he was truly of God. You can't question your so-called Matthew 23 preachers. You can't question You can't question your brothers and sisters to know the truth from there. You start gossiping. You start keeping malice. You start doing all these things that the church branched from Roman Catholicism allows. And you say you are going to heaven. So instead of one of them to call that, why did you see you for me to even say so, I believe that by saying it out, whether he obeys 
Ah, uh, listen, that's his own. Heaven knows I've asked him for that unity bond or whatever. There is no scripture to be broken and the money involved to be returned. He has not returned the money. That may go into, you know, a lot of money. Millions in Nigeria money now. He has not returned it. He has not answered. Yet he continues his Ananias behaviors. So the question remains, where is this unity I paid good money for? In my own sight, is all dissolved. I break every ungodly uniformity. In Yeshua's powerful name. Amen. This is the reason why you need to break every link, every sexual link with those you have been in partner with. Even after asking God for forgiveness, based on the prayer of Psalm 51, 10 to 12, creating me a clean heart. Take not your Holy Spirit from me, that King David prayed. And cancel out every oath, every swearing, every covenant, every uniformity that is not pleasing to the Lord. Breaking every link of sexual sin, of ungodly relationship, ungodly friendship, ungodly feeding and eating, ungodly as shall be, ungodly activities I may have done in the past in ignorance of Hosea 4 6. Lord, deliver me so that I will not be guilty before you. Luke 21 36. As you return soon in the New Seventh Millennium of Peace on Earth by Yeshua's special grace, my Lord, my Savior, my Holy Spirit. Have your way in my life. Use me more and more. Speak through me mysteries that have been hidden for such a time as this. Will you lift up your hands and worship, worship, worship Him? Oh, Jesus, Shaka, shaka, me. Oh, oh, Samidalade.